Welcome everyone. It is Tuesday and today is Travel Tuesday. It's a little more specific this week for our Bare Feet Live. I love to say this every week and it is the truth. It is my favorite day of the week because we get to connect with people around the world. And this week we're doing something different because I've decided once a month we're going to have not just dancers that we feature on our Bare Feet Lives, but dancer, uh, excuse me, travelers who are my friends, who I consider travel family, who are people that have impacted the travel industry and that are just beautiful travel storytellers. And today is no exception. I am super excited to introduce uh, a very dear friend of mine. We've met in the travel sphere. We were both speakers at a TBEX a couple of years ago. Uh, it is Corey Lee from Curb Free with Corey Lee. Hey, Corey. Yeah, so good to see you again. I'm so Thank glad you. you're on here with us today. Thank you. By the way, everybody on here, Corey, is you you tune into Bare Feet Live every week. I love seeing you and your mom um, comments. It's just an honor that you take your time every week to join us. And I'm so glad that you're here. And your mom's on too. Hey, Sandy, what's up? <laughs> Today, I hope I, I'm glad she said that. I, I I would think she's a little partial, but it is true. It is true. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, before we get started, I just want to say a quick shout out to everybody on here. We have David. We have uh, Desiree. Desiree, thank you always for sharing with your friends. Uh, Matt, hello. Tatiana, Jim Woods, Shirley from New York, Eric from Texas. We have the Ewan family from DC. Thank you so, so much. Crystal, mahalo. Thank you for joining us from Nevada. Uh, Jim is from Indiana or Indianapolis. I think Indianapolis. And then a whole bunch of other people. So Everyone joining us this week's Bare Feet Live, we are talking travel. It is Travel Tuesday. And please take note, this is going to be our only Bare Feet Live for the week because Thursday is Thanksgiving and we yeah. all need a little time to be grateful, to eat a lot of food, uh, mm -hmm. whether with we're home or with family. Um, I, I, I'm so honored that you're going to be our only guest. And by the way, you're our 36th Bare Feet Live guest. Wow. <laughs> you are a pro at this, I know. <laughs> I would hope I have it down after 36 weeks <laughs> of trying to figure out how to how to how to do things online and virtually. So, um, Corey, I want you know you and I met. Well, first we were the beauty of social media and the beauty of the travel industry and travel storytelling and content creation is we were connected before we ever met. No. Um, my sister has been a huge fan of yours for a long time. My sister is a wheelchair user, user herself. Um, and so we've been sort of in the same sphere. And I know with you and my sister have always, we've all, sort of all missed each other. I think we're still trying to plan a trip where we're all in one place at one time. But um, I heard you speak as, that was the first time we got to meet, was you were the opening keynote speaker at TBEX in the Finger Lakes uh, yeah. region. And it was First of all, phenomenal talk. Um, and I'm not just saying that because you're on here with me, but uh, it was one of the best TBEX talks I've ever heard. Um, yeah. No, all truth. And um, and I just love what you're doing. So if you can tell everybody on here who may not be familiar with your work, who you are and what you do and what your mission is, because I think it's just fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, thank you again for having me. It's Really an honor, as you know. I mean, I'm on here every week watching. And so when I got the email from you, I was like, I, I really feel like a celebrity now. Oh. I'm on a bare feet live. Like I did something in, right in my life to get to this point. Thank so, you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. But um, I started uh, Curb Free with Corey Lee back in 2013, late 2013. So it's almost seven years old. And it's a blog devoted to sharing the world from my perspective as a wheelchair user. Mm -hmm. And so I really started the blog. Um, I, first of all, I was, we'll go way, way back. So I was diagnosed at the age of two with spinal muscular atrophy, which basically means that my muscles are a lot weaker than the average person's. And they do um, get weaker over time. So I don't have the same abilities like today that I'll have 10 years into the future. Mm -hmm. And so it's always kind of been like a constant reminder for me to do as much as I can now while I'm more able than I will be, you know, later on down the road. Um, and yeah. so, um, that's a good constant reminder, I think. And I'm really fortunate to, I think, view it that way. And I've been raised by a single mom that kind of raised me with the, um, by there being like no limits and 
my beliefs. So um, I started the blog back in 2013 as a culmination of kind of like two things. So I was planning a trip to Australia and I got online and started doing research and noticed that there really wasn't a lot of information about accessibility within Australia. Right. And so I thought, you know, there needs to be a website that details like international accessibility um, information when it comes to what like, things to do, where to stay, transportation within the different cities. And yeah. there just weren't very many websites like that in 2013. Um, and so then right after that, another thing happened where I was about to graduate college um, with my degree in marketing. And I got um, a job interview in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So I flew all the way to Pittsburgh from, I live in Georgia. So from Atlanta to Pittsburgh, got to Pittsburgh, went straight to the interview. And as soon as I went in the interview, the guy like immediately looked me up and down and he said, well, this job involves a lot of traveling, so you're probably not the best fit. And I had just flown all the way from Pittsburgh, like, and you know, flying as a wheelchair user. Yeah, you can travel, travel to get here. I can travel. Right, and I told them before going even that I used the wheelchair, but apparently the people that like scheduled the interview didn't tell him, and he was the one hiring, and so I went through all that just to get there. And then he said that I could not get the job just because and involved traveling. And so at that moment, I thought, I'm going to show him. And so uh, being a like, determined person that I am, um, from just realizing that, you know, there wasn't a website that detailed accessible travel. And then that circumstance, that's when I launched Curb Free with Corey Lee. That's awesome. I, I have to say a few things. First of all, uh, that has happened to my sister many times of her going to a job interview and them denying her a job based on the fact that they're like making an excuse for, for something that obviously is, wasn't the case. And number two, fuel for the fire, man. I mean, I feel the same way. The best way to in, uh, invigorate someone to, to, to prove you, prove them wrong is to do the exact opposite. It's like, okay, you yeah. think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wish I knew his email address and I would like send him a link to my site, but Good. Yeah, it's it's been a wild journey the past like seven years since that though, and I'm really thankful that it happened because it really like lit a fire in me to like get out there, travel, like put great information online, and yeah. hopefully show others you know where they can go. I love it. I'm gonna put your website up again so that Thank people you. can keep referring to it. For everybody on here, we are with Corey Lee, dear friend, incredible traveler. If you go to Curb Free with Corey Lee, he is a blogger, content creator. Um, media mogul now. I mean, you're getting so much press. I love it so much. Every time I open up um, the your Facebook page, it's like featured in Good Morning America, featured in you know, all these amazing things, um, which is a few things. A, it's it's uh, showing how hard you're working, right? You, you're still, everybody has to work hard to get their story told. But what's wonderful is you know, everyone is always about embracing diversity and diverse voices. And sometimes people don't think diversity also includes inclusion. You know, people that are um, diverse, able body, able body wise, right? So, yeah, I, every time, yeah. I mean, every time that I like get a feature, like, and I was on CNN a couple months ago, Good Morning America, like all these big publications. Um, and I mean, it's really a huge step for the entire you know, disabled community, I think, because, yeah. you know, then people are finally seeing that wheelchair users are not just like staying at home and, you know, doing nothing like we're out there living our lives and yeah. trying to do all of these remarkable things if we're just given the accessibility and the opportunity to do that. Yeah, that level, that level playing field of just being able to, to have the access to that. Um, speaking right. of uh, for the disability community of being recognized. I mean, I know, look, when Biden said his his speech, it was incredible to hear uh, the disability community included in that because oh, it never happened. Yeah, I, I mean, as soon as I was watching it that night and as soon as he mentioned the disability community, I like just started weeping. And mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it was like such an emotional moment because yeah. we haven't really heard that over the past four years, you know, and so to finally 
see someone recognize that was just a huge moment, whether you're for Biden or Trump or no matter who you're for, it's a huge moment for this, the disability community. Huge moment. And I think, uh, you know, for someone who has a disability or a family member with a disability, that's put out for a lot of people, you know, because you hear that, you know, a lot of people don't think of it, but we heard him, we heard him and it was just amazing. It was really amazing. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about a few things. Uh, first of all, you have this incredible book. Let's explore with core core. Um, I love it. Thank you for sending me a copy. I absolutely love it. You and your mom uh, co-wrote it together. Yeah, we did. We uh, released it this past July on July 26th, that actually, which was the 30th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act. And um, we started writing the book about three years ago, just because when I was growing up, I really never saw a character out there on TV or in books that used a powered wheelchair like I did. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted today's kids that do use a wheelchair to finally feel represented and see themselves within a character. And so that's where the idea for Let's Explore with Corker was born. But now that it's actually out into the world, we're hearing from, you know, kids that do use wheelchairs, they love seeing someone that represents them, but also even kids that don't use a wheelchair are finally, you know, seeing a character that does and realizing, you know, well, maybe people in wheelchairs, they can actually travel and do things. So I think yeah. it's really good. You know, whether someone has a disability or not, I hope that it inspires them and shows them what all is possible. I was gonna say, I, I highly recommend this book, not just for kids with disabilities, but all children to have to see that, that when you see other kids in a wheelchair or with a disability, they can do these incredible things. And and the de remind everybody, these destinations you've actually been to. So it's not like this whimsical, uh, aspirational sort of non-attainable goal. Like you've been to all the places that you feature in the book. Yeah. It's, it's totally accessible and doable, which I think yeah. is on top, the most important thing too. It's not just this dream, it's, a, it's actually attainable. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was really important to include only places that I've been to because those are destinations that people can actually look on my blog mm -hmm. and find out the accessibility information for all of those destinations. And so when you see that Korkor is in Finland, I mean, you can go to Finland um, no matter what your disability is. Finland has over 300 wheelchair accessible taxis. And wow. I mean, that's incredible and something that I never thought would happen in Finland. And right. So, right. Um, all these places are just like really unique destinations that maybe, you know, I, even I, before going there, would think that they aren't possible as a wheelchair user. But then once I actually visited, I learned, you know, that accessibility can sometimes be where you least expect it. Exactly, exactly. So everybody on here, if you want to check out Let's Explore with Corecor, it is available on your website and on Amazon. Yeah, it's on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, um, everywhere online that you can get a book pretty much. Yeah. That's fantastic. I love that. So speaking of places you've been, uh, tell us where, how many countries, how many continents? I mean, you've been all seven, right? All seven continents? Yeah, uh, this past February, right before we went into a full pandemic. Um, I actually had the chance to cruise to Antarctica um, with Holland America. And that was just the most incredible experience of my life. I dreamed of going to Antarctica since I was like six years old and then finally got to go. And it like surpassed every expectation that I had. I'll never forget like when we actually arrived in Antarctica, I went out onto the deck and immediately saw whales and penguins and wow. giant icebergs. And it, uh, I just like started crying. I'm, I'm, I'm really emotional. Like, Me uh, too. <laughs> Corey, you know I am. I cry all the damn time. Oh, I, I've cried watching your show before. Like, <laughs> I cry over everything. But yeah, um, it was just the most incredible experience. And uh, I visit over the past seven years, I've done all seven continents. 37 countries. I've been to Morocco, South Africa, Israel, India, all over places that I never could have dreamed of going to. And luckily, the world is becoming more and more accessible and more tour companies are opening up now that specialize in accessibility. And so even, you know, if somewhere is inaccessible today, 
and a couple of years from now, they may finally be. So I love that accessibility is finally kind of coming to the forefront. Yeah. Um, and the recognition that it deserves. Yeah. And, you know, the disability community, it, any any person can become part of that community at any point in their lives. And that's something to really remember. I know when my sister, you know, when my sister, she's, a, as you know, an, an advocate for people with disabilities, but that's something people need to realize is at any point, anybody can be, become a part of the disability community. And as you get older, you're more likely to anyway, if you oh, yeah. need or you need a walker or a wheelchair. So I think um, aside from uh, the disability community, whether you're born with a disability, but a lot of tour companies are realizing we need to make this accessible because right. we're getting older and that's, that's actually helping overall the entire yes. when, whenever I am giving like a keynote or doing any type of speech, I always mention, um, you know, that people with disabilities spend over $17 billion per year just on travel. According to a survey in 2017 uh, by the Open Doors organization, they found that out. So, um, I mean, it's a huge market that yeah. a lot of places that are not accessible are really missing out on that money. And as soon as I mention that huge amount of money, like everybody's eyes in the audience, they're like, yeah. what? Like, <laughs> How can I tap market? into that market? How right, can... right. Like, why am I not doing this? Right. Um, what you said is so true. I mean, anyone can become disabled at any point. Um, and so by making the world you know, accessible today, it could be helping you in, in the future, which I mean, is amazing. So. Yeah. Why not just do it early and then you don't have to worry about it later on? Yeah, yeah. For everybody joining us, we are with Corey Lee of Curb Free with Corey Lee. Corey, I, I am so glad you're on here today uh, for so many reasons. Um, can we talk about, well, let's talk about where you've been recently because you, you've you been traveling. You've, you've been on a trip. So tell us what that's been like, especially during COVID, where you went, how, how it went. Yeah. So during the pandemic, I have been on quite a few road trips. I think I've done six or seven road trips, um, mostly to local places just nearby. I've gone to national parks. I did the Great Smoky Mountains. I did Shenandoah National Park. Um, I've done, I went to North Carolina and stayed at an alpaca farm. Oh, wow. uh, which was something I never would have done pre-pandemic. So definitely having a lot of unique experiences. And I actually, two days ago, returned from a three week a three week trip around Florida. So I went to um, Clearwater, Florida, um, Key West, and the Florida Keys, and then to Disney World. And before going, I was like really nervous. Like, would it be safe? Would people actually be wearing masks? Uh, what's it like? How seriously are they taking it? You know. And then I went, and I mean, I felt honestly safer like at Disney World than I do even going to a grocery store here in my hometown. Um, I mean, as I've said before, I live in Georgia, so um, we are not doing so well with the COVID-19. Um, and There are a lot of cases in this state, so it was really refreshing to like be somewhere where, you know, most people were wearing a mask. Everybody at Disney was, they had to. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I mean, it really went a lot better than I thought it was going to. And um, I stayed definitely as safe as possible, but I think you, if you're going to be traveling right now, I mean, definitely get tested before going. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you're not, you know, just um, not going to be like a carrier and taking it to that local community. Yeah. And I was tested like before going. I was tested upon returning home. Um, and then, you know, just trying to stay as safe as possible, wearing a mask, only going to places where they are wearing masks and trying to be safe. So, and Key West, a lot of the like little bars were kind of packed and mm -hmm. I heard clear of those and just yeah. like, like restaurants that were actually taking it seriously, you know. So um, it's definitely a lot different than it used to be traveling during the pandemic. But yeah. I think, you know, it is safe if you just take the right steps. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't feel safe, it's okay not to go right. to travel. You know, it's. I think that's something to consider too is for people, don't feel like you, you have to travel. I, I am in the boat of, I've been I've been very cautious. I've been very cautious. I went to to see my family, um, and I went to see Adriana, my sister. But besides that, I've been hunkered down, doing our bare traveling the world through our bare feet lives, uh, <laughs> which has been really fun. 
Um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of up to each person. I mean, what they're comfortable with. I mean, I'm definitely not encouraging anyone to travel right now. I mean, yeah. that's totally up to you. But um, if you are going to do it, just do it safely and responsibly, I think. Yeah. Now let's get back to, well, COVID now, you know, what's wonderful is there's some, the light at the end of the tunnel seems like it's getting closer. Oh, right? We have all these updates every day of, of vaccines. Uh -huh. um, doesn't mean it's going to happen overnight, but what are you looking forward to in 2021? Uh, so in 2021, I have a couple things planned already. So in April, I'm going to be leading a curb-free group tour in Costa Rica. I do these trips annually, and we, in 2018, went to Morocco. In 2019, we went to Iceland, and then we were supposed to be in Costa Rica this year. Mm. But, of course, that was postponed the next year. So hopefully that will happen in April, um, if anyone wants to join we have like one spot left so if you're watching and you want to go feel free to email me and uh we can get you on the tour but we're planning for april if, as long as everything is still going okay by then or gets right. you know so and then i actually just booked another international trip uh, to oktoberfest in munich for next september so I was kind of just like wanting to book something internationally and have something to like dream about. And so I booked it and whether it happens or not, who knows, but we'll see. Yeah. I, I have to say Oktoberfest is probably the best party you'll ever go to. I am excited. <laughs> it is. Have you ever been to Munich? I have. Uh, so okay. Munich is actually the first place that I ever went to in Europe. Oh. I went for my uh, high school graduation trip. Oh, how cool. A couple weeks in Munich and Southern Germany, and it's amazing. So I've always wanted to go to Oktoberfest, though. And You're going to really love it. I'm hoping we can do it. Yeah. If it doesn't happen next year, then definitely 2022. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, at mm -hmm. least definitely get to it at some point. It is just, it's very safe. Uh, everyone's just, it's a lot. It's just a lot of fun, you know. Everyone's having a good time. They're dressed in lederhosen and and yeah. dernals and drinking. I gotta find some lederhosen. Yeah, you do. You have to get the lederhosen. <laughs> um, but explain a little more about your your tours because I think you know, like you said, there are companies that are starting up to to do accessible travel trips, and here you're giving your viewers and your readers a chance to not only have these experiences that you're having, but then to be able to travel with you, the person who they look up to, who they're excited to, to hear your take on things and, and they trust you, you know, that that's the, the most amazing part of this is they get to travel with you. So could, tell us a little more uh, about these trips. Yeah. So I started the trips in 2018 because I kept getting messages from like my followers and readers wanting to know if I would ever lead a group tour. And I kind of like considered it for a couple of years and thought, you know, it'd be a lot of work to do Would I feel comfortable with it. And then I finally decided to just like dive right in and try it. And so we went to Morocco in 2018 and that was literally the best trip of my life. I mean, it surpassed, I mean, every expectation. I really didn't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. In Morocco, it's not somewhere that I've ever really dreamed about going to. But then when I actually got there, I was like, why have I never been here before? Yeah, It's the most incredible country in the world, I think. Um, and being able to experience that with, you know, fellow wheelchair users was just amazing. I mean, us rolling through the alleyways and the Medina and Marrakesh, so like getting all those stairs and people like, what are they doing? You know, it was just like something I'll never forget. Um, and I think, you know, that's a good way to change a lot of perceptions also because they're not really used to seeing so many like powered wheelchairs there in Morocco in one location. So right. you know, I right. think traveling together really has the power to change perceptions. And, yeah. Um, yeah. So that's why I keep doing it annually. We went to Iceland last year um, and then Costa Rica next year. And um, I'm hoping to make it, you know, an annual thing and hopefully eventually we'll do a few trips a year even um, after the pandemic. So, yeah, um, I was going to say, yeah. would you repeat destinations? I know my sister has wanted to go to Iceland with you for so long. Well, she wants to go on a trip with you at some point, yeah, but I'll would you consider that. doing like one trip per season, you know, fall, spring, winter. And so you have that so that because I, it's a it's small group tours. So what only... Yeah. 10 people? Yeah, usually about eight. Like eight is kind of the sweet spot. So mm -hmm. um, 
with, I mean, that many wheelchairs, it's hard to find a bus that can hold that many wheelchair users. So yeah. we usually have like four wheelchair users and then their companions. Um, mm -hmm. And that's kind of a really good number to keep it small and um, everyone connected that way. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Everybody out here, we are with Corey Lee of Curb Free with Corey Lee. Uh, incredible traveler, incredible storyteller. I just love what you're doing. If anybody has any questions, we're gonna I'm gonna keep rolling with this. But um, if there's anyone who has any particular questions for him today, he is here for you. Um, and again, this is our only bare feet live for the week. Thursday is Thanksgiving. I'm gonna be stuffing my face with turkey and homemade pumpkin pie and all mm -hmm. the things because Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday and I love food. <laughs> yeah, me too. It's it's one of my faves. I'm like, I'm ready for all of the dressing and the sweet potato casserole and all the good stuff. <laughs> all the good stuff. All the good stuff. My family, uh, we usually do it when, when we're home. So it's my favorite holiday and my husband's favorite holiday. So we have to split it every other year. Yeah. Um, and obviously this year we're not, we're just too far to go um, to my family's house, but it's, um, we do like half Italian, half American. So the oh, first nice. half of the meal is like antipasto, ravioli, like the whole Italian dinner. And then you have the turkey and the stuffing and the mashed potatoes. So it's like oh. a it's like this eating frenzy for hours. You know? I, I want to go to the Malosi family. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> then we take, then we like rest, then we come back and have the chestnuts and the fruit and Finocchio, like the fennel, and then we take another rest, maybe watch a movie. Then we have the pies and the all the desserts, and then we later that night we eat leftovers. So then we eat all the right. turkey. I mean, it's like the leftovers like, are like the best part. I think that's the best part. That's the best part. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. Um, okay, so Thanksgiving's coming up. I know, um, you know, travel has been. I'm I'm curious to know what how you think travel is going to change once we can travel, not the way we used to, um, but closer to what a quote unquote normal might look like. What, what do you think is yeah. going to change or what we've learned from, from this whole COVID experience? Uh, I mean, I definitely think we're going to have more meaningful travel um, and people are going to be like wanting those local connections that really mean a lot because I think we're going to be traveling, you know, I think people are going to be traveling more in depth. Um, and so instead of just doing like a weekend at a local place, maybe they'll finally start traveling internationally for the first time or trying new experiences and uh, trying to just live as much as possible. I think uh, that's definitely what I'll be doing, what I've been doing, I think, but even more so after the pandemic. Um, and then I also think it's been really good as far as like even safety goes. So as someone that is immunocompromised, I mean, um, wearing the masks on the plane, the extra sanitizing, the new filters on planes. I mean, that's something that I hope will stay around forever, hopefully. I mean, yeah. maybe, not, maybe not the masks uh, so much, but the sanitization and cleanliness of the planes, I hope that sticks around for sure. Yeah. Let's have a little bit more caution um, of, you know, their actions on other people and more empathy, I hope. Yeah. I agree. I think people are going to, when we can travel more freely of, of having that travel with intention versus just traveling, traveling to get that selfie yeah. in front of whatever shot, you know, it's like, I want to go there to really experience that place versus just sending pictures back home to family yeah. to prove I was there. You know, right. that's, that's the goal. I do hope because look, we, I miss travel. But I also miss like going and having brunch with my friends. Like I miss oh, yeah. doing normal stuff. Right. I, I I miss the normal stuff like so much. I mean, I would kill to just like go see a movie even. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was, like, I've always been like a movie holic and like gone to the movies every week and now I can't. So I'm like dying to just get in a theater, go to a nice dinner, like all that good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, everybody, this is uh, Corey Lee from Curb Free with Corey Lee. Again, if you want to check out his children's book, it's called Let's Explore with Corcor. Corcor is obviously the character based on him and all the places he has actually been to. I highly recommend it, not just for children with disabilities, but for all children. It's a wonderful, wonderful book. Um, great illustrations, uh, awesome destinations. It's a great Christmas present. Hint, hint. I think you should order it. Um, and... 
for everybody uh, on here, I'm just so grateful, Corey, for the work you're doing. Um, you know, as someone who my sister has a disability, it's always so important to have representation and um, showing someone like you in the travel industry. You're a pioneer, really. I mean, there are people that have been doing this, but you're really pushing the envelope of like, hear me, see me, and you better be behind me or else you're going to be left behind. So I think it's really wonderful what you're doing. Thank you so much. Um, no, thank you. I want. I, I just want to pop up a few. There were a few questions. Um, there was one. Let's see. Up, 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 up. Here we go. Um, oh my goodness, we have so many. This is great. Oh, someone said no drinking and driving, Corey, at Oktoberfest. <laughs> uh, but, uh, well, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> I know. My well, my sister has to use a hand, a, a mouth joystick, so hopefully that <laughs> that won't. Uh, um, so Sue Miller says, "I hope you can get zip line in Costa Rica. Someplace can make it happen." Were you are you planning on doing zip lining? Uh, we are not for this tour, but I know that adaptive zip lining does exist in Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. so I actually went to Costa Rica for the first time in 2019, so last year, yeah, yeah. And um, they do have adaptive zip lining. I did not do it there, but I have done it actually in Florida at Gator Land. Um, it's like a theme park, and I went zip lining over a pond full of gators. And it's the, one of the most fun things I've ever done. So zip lining is so much fun if you can do it. That's cool. And then again, I know we talked about this before, but Crystal wanted to ask: Eight is the sweet spot. Do you also include a family member? So yeah, yeah. you were saying four wheelchair users and. Right and their companions, that that makes the eight. Yes, exactly. Plus you, so that's 10, right? Sometimes, yeah. Eight, we're, for, for Costa Rica, we're doing a max eight, including me. Okay. Um, but we are doing two tours, actually. So back-to-back -to -back tours, I'll go with the first group and then half of the second group, mm -hmm. um, I'll be on their tour. So um, we do have availability. If you wanna go, definitely reach out. Um, you can go to my website and email me from there. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Corey. Thank your mom, please, for, I feel like our, our mothers are probably very similar. I think they'd have a great hangout if once we're all oh, together, yeah. um, because yeah. my mom taught both of us, me and my sister, don't take any mm, from anybody mm -hmm. and yeah. <laughs> trying to keep it PG for the kiddos on here. Yeah. Um, so I love your mom and she's fantastic. And I'm so glad that she is on this journey with you, but Corey, thank you so much for sharing your story. Again, for everybody on here, go to Curb Free with Corey Lee. And these are just great stories about destinations in general. Um, you know, I've never been to Antarctica and I love the piece that you wrote. And I know oh, yeah. there's a couple people on here too. Um, you know, it's, it's just great travel content. It doesn't necessarily have to be just for people uh, who are wheelchair users. It's just fantastic travel content. So yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, just because somewhere is accessible, um, it doesn't mean that it's inaccessible for an able-bodied person. So hopefully, you know, people of all abilities can enjoy the content. And yeah, thank you so much for having me again. I really, really, really do appreciate it. This is definitely the highlight of my week. So oh, oh I the Thanksgiving dinner. Let's. I, I'll come yeah. happily okay. second. Yeah, you, okay. you, you guys are tied, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Corey. And thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. We are not doing any lives this Thursday, but we will be back starting next week, next Tuesday here on Facebook and YouTube to start dancing again. Um, and we have some incredible guests for December. Corey, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Be safe. Be well. Wear your masks. Eat as much food as you want. It doesn't matter. Just eat it. It'll make you yeah. happy. <laughs> Bye, yeah. everyone. Thank you, Corey. Bye. Happy Thanksgiving.